Let's see what we have to set up to have a correct rendering of fur. Here we have our chipmunk. Here we have material, very simple one for fur as before. Nothing special, just some white melanin. Assignments, our lights and camera. And this is a, a default render settings that we have. If I go render XPU. So this is what we get by default. And obviously we see that our fur here should be white instead of gray. We also need to change this one to XPU. We also want to add more rays to the rendering so we get less noise. So let's do 1024. We don't want motion blur, depth of field for now. So we will not set any limits globally right now. We will set them specifically for the groom. If we create render geometry settings and then pick up our groom and go to the limits and set up diffuse limits to something more than one, we will immediately see that we have more bounces in here. Starts looking more correct. So we will go here 20 and then we would need is caustics. So with caustics we get better indirect calculation through the hair because the ray will go through the hair, bounce other hair and give us back a light information. So we can also wait a little bit. After 30 seconds, we can uh, snap this. We don't need to wait anymore. So here, if I also enable the reflection and set the reflection to 20, wait 30 seconds. So we can snap this. And if we compare this two, we will see that there is a little bit of contribution in reflection. So we will keep both of those at 20. Basically this is the the most important thing with the fur is to enable more bounces and enable caustics and everything else here. Also the number of rays, how much noisy you want to go. Also what is important to set up to have a consistency between a CPU render and XPU render is auto bias where you need to make that little bit more precise and push XPU to do a little bit more precise calculations. The next thing that you should always have to evaluate your shader is your AOVs. By default you would have here a beauty and that will give you the C depth primitive ID and instance ID. So what you want to have is combine diffuse and also combine glossy. So if you look now the AOEs combine diffuse will give you uh, what is in diffuse combine glossy reflection will give you the specularity response on your hair and you also would need subsurface scattering to see the transmission colors that goes through the hair and all of them together would construct your beauty. You will see later why the specularity is important to observe individually and see how that looks. You can also have that separate as direct and indirect. That's the direct specularity. This one is transmission and this one is indirect and combined they are all together. We don't need indirect, direct and combined will tell us a lot. The next thing that you could do, you could uh, use denoiser. So you have NVIDIA, it's a little bit too strong. You lose all your details at the beginning, but they pop up later. You can also use Intel. Intel is a little bit better, but still you need to wait more than 30 seconds to actually see nice and clean image for uh, this resolution, 500, 300. This is still super fast with XPU. On CPU, this would take more than an hour. What we also created here is a camera. It's a copy of standard camera. The only thing that, is, what is the difference between default camera and a camera that we call here camera lens is that we added a couple of attributes on the camera here. And it's just a collection and a list of uh, some film cameras. The first value here is a diameter of the back plate or sensor or a film size. This is the resolution that is used uh, 
uh, if it says 8K, that means it's a digital. If it says film, that means it's a film. The third value here is the name of the camera, the brand. And the last one is the size in millimeters of sensor or film. Most of the time in this lesson, we will use a full frame film that is also by default. The second one called focal length is just some possible lenses and some recommendation where this lens could be used so for the animals wildlife usually 300 200 135 so if i change that to let's say 200 or maybe 135 i go a little bit closer here it gives you a different perspective for the purpose of this tutorial we will mostly be 300 and 200 and the next thing here is a f stop this is a list of some possible f stops we have a full stop half and one third we will most of the time use for our presentation 2.8 so if i turn on here a camera effect i pick up my lens pick up my f-stop you will see that i have a corresponding depth of field if you select the transformation here you get possible shortcuts shift f will give you the plane for the focus distance so with the shift click you can pick up your focus point and you can see that the focus distance is changing if you change the lens to 200 or maybe 135, you come closer. Obviously, you would need to readjust your focus distance. Shift, click and pick up where you want to focus. Have your render with the depth of field. What this camera lens tool does, it creates the attributes on the camera and they are string attributes, primwares, that we will later use to transfer to EXR metadata. And at the same time, readjusts the values on the camera itself with the script. So if you go to edit, you will see that there is a Python module in the scripts and there are functions here created to grab the data from the attribute and set set down these parameters that is done by executing that function when value gets changed on them so when value gets changed here that function gets executed it reads the value from that parameter and sets on the camera itself so if you go here and you see when i'm changing 200 it just changes this value if i change the, the back plate it is changing here if i'm changing f-stop it changes here see with the depth of field you need to readjust shift click that's it here we have a, a specific uh, setup uh, it's just a white light sometimes very useful to check your shading it's just a white color and we call that white furnace and if i replace with my tool here and add just that light it's a pure white color that is emitted from every direction and when you observe your uh, your character the value that comes back from this character cannot be bigger than one this is how you check if you are breaking physicality of the shader because the energy that comes to the shader and bounce back it always needs to be less than one except if it's a, a mirror super mirror